Hello and welcome to another tech tip by VM Nerd. Today's topic, a how to install an Ubuntu Linux VM. And with that, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to do is we need to actually go and download the Ubuntu Linux ISO CD. So, and you can do that by going to ubuntu.com. Click on the uh, server-based OS, because that's what we're going to build and install. Click on Download Server. And because we are going to actually use an older one, we're going to go ahead and click the previous release. And from here, this is where we're going to select our 14.04. Okay. And the image that we're going to use for today is actually a 64-bit ISO. Okay, so let's go ahead and download that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is let's actually go and get uh, an SSH client because we don't really have one of those. And I personally use PuTTY because uh, it works just fine. Okay, so PuTTY EXE. Okay, so now that that's complete, let's go ahead and log into VMware, vSphere client. Okay, and let's go ahead and actually upload the ISO image that we actually downloaded. Okay, so under software, upload. Take just a moment here. Okay, so now that that is uploaded, let's go ahead and create our VM shell. And for this, we're just going to use a typical. Uh, VM image here. We're going to call this, call it UB01 for Ubuntu. As far as our storage goes, we can pick one of the solid state drives. We'll go ahead and select Linux and we will select the Ubuntu 64 option. We're just going to do one NIC and it will be in the VLAN 300 space. And click next and as far as size goes, we'll just create a 16 gig virtual disk. Next, let's go ahead and edit the uh, virtual ma machine settings. And go ahead and eh, one core. Uh, we'll do one gig of memory, that's sufficient. Go ahead and get rid of the floppy since we don't need it. And I personally like switching the uh, SCSI controller type to a SAS base. And uh, Let's go ahead and mount the ISO image while we're in here. So go ahead and click connect, data store, and there's the software and our new Ubuntu image there. Okay, let's go ahead and power it on. Click open. And we're just going to go ahead and walk right through it. Okay. Okay, our language here that we're in is actually English. So go ahead and click install. Okay, so for our keyboard language, go ahead and click English. Uh, United States. Keyboard, I always select no. Um, otherwise, it's going to do a bunch of things and it just actually takes longer. So just select no. You can manually select what it is you're going to you know, put in there. Believe it or not, it actually goes a little bit faster. And let's go ahead at this point and go ahead and just select UB01. 
for our host name. And for the default username, we'll go ahead and just use the word default. Okay, and then a password of your choice. And we are not going to encrypt our directory here. And it's going to select our time zone. And the default option is sufficient. Next. Go ahead and write the changes. Yep. Amount is the amount of our VMDK file. Write the changes. As far as the proxy information, we'll go ahead and just continue. Okay, so this is where you want to manage the upgrades. So just go ahead and select no. And the one thing I always do like to do is go ahead and install the OpenSSH server and click continue. Okay, let's go ahead and load the Grub bootloader. Okay, and our installation is complete. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Go ahead and eject the CD while we're waiting. Okay, let's go ahead and log in. We'll have to use our default account and whatever password you decide to have made it. Okay, we're going to run a sudo su space minus and whatever the uh, sudo password is, which is basically your password. And from here, we're actually using root. So let's go ahead and do an if config space minus a so we can get the IP address. This will allow us to actually run SSH into this uh, virtual machine. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and open our putty that we downloaded earlier, and let's go ahead and use the IP that's listed here. Dot 30.100. So go ahead and log in with your default account. And then we'll go ahead and use whatever your top secret password is. Okay. And I personally will run sudo su minus top secret password again. And from here, we'll go ahead and do. Okay. So we'll go ahead and run our apt dash get update. Okay, so basically what this is going to do, it's going to actually go out there and uh, update all the packages that are currently uh, on this machine, or update all the information about the packages. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and do an update, space, upgrade. Go ahead and select Y, otherwise it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to continue? Oops, I did the wrong one there. Let's go ahead and do apt get upgrade space minus y. 
There you go. And there we go, we are up to date. So because this is a virtual machine, let's go ahead and install, let's go ahead and install the uh, VM tools or the virtual machine tools. So we'll go ahead and run an apt get install open dash VM slash tools. Go ahead and just do a dash Y at the end. Otherwise it's gonna ask you, are you sure? If you already know the answer, you might as well just add it. So let's go ahead and just do a restart first, and we'll come back and do this again. Okay. Let's go ahead and log back in. IP shouldn't have changed. So 30.100. Okay. We use default for a username. And whatever your secret password is there. sudo su minus. And whatever your password is again. And let's go ahead and run that previous command about the open VM tools. Okay, so app get install open dash VM dash tools. And do the dash minus Y. And that's all it was. We just had to reboot because the... Uh, the upgrade that we just did it, we actually it did something to the kernel, so we had to reboot so the kernel could reload and then go ahead and uh, process our VM tools install. So the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and set up a static IP. Okay. So um, we are on one of our management boxes here, so and we're going to go ahead and open up our demo.vmnerd.com. Uh, domain here and let's go ahead and add a static early on so if you look right here ESX is 10.30 so let's go ahead and add let's just use let's use 10.9 or 30.9 okay so we use um, this guy here will be actually we'll call it my IP and then we'll do 192.160 dot actually you know what do UB01 and we're going to use 130.9. Okay, go ahead and create a pointer record. Okay. And because we were actually going to, we actually have a purpose for this, let's go ahead and create a C name or an alias name. And we're going to call this guy my IP. And let's go ahead and click the browse button. And in one of our future videos, you'll actually see what we're doing here. And it's a static here. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and minus this out. And let's go ahead and res reset the IP address. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a... Do a, a VI slash network. interfaces okay so the first thing I like to do when I'm configuring a static IP I like to actually go ahead and rem out uh, what's currently existing okay so we're gonna go ahead and create a new line just like the one we had there so ETH 0 inet and then instead of DHCP we're gonna go ahead and type in static okay and then the first line is going to actually start our IP address. So our IP address is going to be 192.168.30.9. And then our net mask, which is going to be a class C net mask, which will be three two five fives and then a zero at the end. Our default gateway is 192.168. Dot 30.254 dot 
and this is where we're going to go ahead and put our DNS servers. Actually, it's DNS name servers. Technicalities 192.168.30.1. And we can put dot two, but since we really don't have that configured in our lab environment or our demo environment, that might just be a waste. And then we're going to go ahead and type in DNS search. And this is going to where we're going to put our actual domain name. And in our case, it's going to be demo.vmnerd.com. Okay, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and hit shift. Uh, colon, and then we'll go ahead and type in WQ so we can go ahead and write it to the file and go ahead and quit. And what we're going to do, just to simplify this, just go ahead and reboot since this uh, Ubuntu box is actually fairly quick. So we'll go ahead and just let it reboot. Okay. And we'll give it just a moment. Okay, so our machine should be back up so let's go ahead and just close that out and we'll go ahead and open up a new putty session and we'll go ahead and type in a UB01 and we'll log in with our default account and whatever your password was okay so we'll go ahead from here and we'll do our sudo su dash and then whatever our top secret password is Okay, so let's go ahead and test our search suffix here. Okay, and the easiest way to do that is just to go ahead and type in ping dc01, which is our domain controller, our DNS server. So let's just do that. And that comes back as expected. And let's just see what happens if we were to ping uh, my IP. We should get back a response as well. It should actually come back to the ubo one which is our Ubuntu box. And there it is. And that's it. I thank you guys for watching our how to install an Ubuntu Linux server VM. Have a great day. Hey guys, don't forget to check out our VM Nerd YouTube channel for more tech tips.